Hello, and welcome to episode 147 of Ready to Mosh. I'm Kev P, and alongside me is the monkey to my wrench. It's Jam G. I knew you were going to do that, because <laughs> I'd have done the same. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Although, I feel like if it wasn't a Foo Fighters episode, you might have gone for a snooker twist, with it being a 147. I think, yeah, I did, I did consider that. Or getting some kind of pun in there relating to snooker. I don't know. I could have done plenty of ball references. You could, yeah. But I didn't. I went for a Foo Fighters reference. Well, it'd be rude not to. I think so, yeah. In case you hadn't already kind of guessed from the title, it's uh, the Foo Fighters review that we went to, it feels like forever ago now. It was a week ago today. In fact, this time last week, we were probably just pulling into London on the train, I think. Yeah, I think you're about right. Oh, actually, I don't yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, we would have. Would we? Yeah. We, we were on a train somewhere near London. I think we were about pulling into King's Cross. Yeah. Oh, can we go back and do it again? Oh, more than happy to. Yes, please. <laughs> so I guess this is going to be obviously a review of the Foo Fighters, the two support acts, and I guess a review of kind of the, our experience of the London Stadium because it was new to both of us. Yeah, first time we've been there. And actually, breaking, not breaking news, revolutionary news perhaps, I don't know. It was your first ever stadium gig. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Which I find weird, but I also kind of get it. Because I, I don't usually go for a stadium band. No, and to be honest, I've been to loads of stadium gigs, but they've all been Bon Jovi. I don't think I've seen anyone else in a stadium before this one. Def Leppard? I've only seen them in arenas. Obviously, they did the stadiums with Motley Crue last year, but we didn't go. Hmm. So I've seen many other bands as well in stadiums supporting Bon Jovi. Yeah. And my first ever gig was a stadium. Was that Bon Jovi? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was that the one where you got the white t-shirt from? I did, yeah. Yeah. Bon Jovi, Van Halen, Thunder. Yeah. Oh, the thing is, I'm not a fan of stadium, the idea of a stadium gig. I know what you mean. And it only it's only obviously going to work with certain bands that have got to have got a certain level, obviously in terms of back catalogue to be able to do the time you need to justify a stadium. Yeah. But I've also got a stage show, so people like your Ramsteins and obviously people like Metallica, yeah. that kind of. Obviously, you've got to be big to do a stadium. Yeah, I think with the stadium ones as well, it's got to be bands that I'm unlikely to see at other festivals that I go to. Yeah. So Green Day, I don't think will ever play Download. They probably won't play Glastonbury. Um, they're the only... They're the only two places that I think stadium bands would play or of that size mm, that I'd yeah. go to at a festival. So, I mean, the Foo Fighters being one, which I did see at Glastonbury. So we got the train from Newark, which is actually, is it further away than Nottingham train station? By miles, I think it is. Yeah. Probably a bit further. Time-wise, a tiny bit longer, but it makes more sense for us to go to Newark because the... EMR line, I think for us to get the EMR, we'd either have to go from where we are to Nottingham or drive to Nottingham. And driving into the city is just a nightmare. Well, exactly, yeah. We'd have to change trains, so we've got to be reliable on, or well, reliant on, well, we'd have to get to the train station first. Exactly, yeah. So either get a bus or a taxi to the train station, change at Nottingham, or drive to Nottingham, so we'd have to go through the city centre. And it's a lot of fucking about. Whereas the Newark station isn't much further distance-wise, isn't much further time-wise. And the service on the, that train line is better than the EMR one. And it's cheaper. And it's cheaper, a lot it cheaper. It was a lot cheaper. So you can keep your purple cushions, EMR. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the Newark one just made more sense completely. And, yeah, it was a nice journey down. It was suspiciously smooth, for want of a better word. Yeah, you kept saying that all week, we, well, all weekend. It's like, it's been too easy. It's been too easy. We've always had really... Bad luck in terms of getting trains to London, haven't we? They've always either been delayed or the train before's been cancelled and everyone's piled onto our train and it's never been easy or we've got stuck in traffic getting to Newark or... Yeah. There's always been something. But it wasn't. It was nice and smooth. Yeah, we got our seat. There's been... There was no one in our seats when we got there. Yeah, that's Another the thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So straight into King's Cross and then you actually relied on me for directions as to where we were going. Yeah, I don't know why. Because normally you just normally you've always got things memorised as we need to get this line, then this line. I think I'm just a bit out of practice. I've not been to London since pre-COVID. 
Mm. Last time I went was Bon Jovi at Wembley, so that was like five years ago. And I didn't go on the train then anyway. And I've not been for two years since the playoffs. Yeah. I don't know. I think it was a lot to think about on the day, and that was just one little thing I'd not accounted for. Partly that and partly thinking that I don't want to plan, we're going to get this, this and this, and then everything's going to go wrong and I'm going to have to rethink it. So yeah. I just thought, we'll wing it when we get there. We just need to go east. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, so I told you which line we needed and you actually followed my instructions and didn't question me for once. <laughs> well, I had no reason to. <laughs> I sensed we were going east and that's all I needed to know. Mm. Yeah, got to the hotel, did our usual trick of, we always somehow, we always exit the tube station at an exit that's actually further away than another exit we could use yeah. that would save like five minutes walking. Guaranteed, if a tube station's got one more, one more, more than one exit, we'll go out the wrong one. Yeah. And it's not that we go out the wrong one. It's just that we pick one, and whichever one we pick, it's always the one further away mm. from where we could get out. Anyway, yeah, we were staying on Brick Lane at the Premier Inn Hub. Mm. If you've ever stayed in a Premier Inn Hub, you know it's pretty much a box room with lots of fancy electric things, but no kettle. That's my review. And a few of a wall. <laughs> And a beautiful wall, yeah. We had a, a few of a brick wall, which is quite amusing. But we tend to stay in them when we're just doing like one, one night, night for a gig, don't we? Because yeah. they, they serve the purpose. Well, I always look at it that if we're only going for one night, there's nowhere staying somewhere, re- no point staying somewhere really nice. Because what are we going to do? We're going to get to the hotel. We'll probably get changed, go out, which is pretty much what we did go out, got some food, um, you know, all fresh, get some food, come back, get changed go to wherever we're going to, come back, sleep, get up, go. It's, yeah. it's like, that is that is it. Yeah, we may as well be in a tent, really. So unless there's a cheap deal on a nice hotel, there's no point. There's no point, yeah. And, yeah, it's only one night, so fine with that. You know you're going to get a good night's sleep. You know what you're going to get with a Premier Inn, don't you? Whether it's a hub or a normal one. Yes, yeah. so just a bog-standard, kind of decent, kind of budget hotel. Yeah. And, yeah, so we got to the hotel anyway. So the, the longest queue in the world, but it was only about two people that needed to be seen. Yeah, we opted for an early check-in because everything was running on time. So we were there at like, what, about half twelve? And check-in wasn't By the latest, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was, yeah, just unnecessarily long queue. Well, it was one person with an issue with their booking, wasn't it? Yeah, a booking for about 18 people, it felt like. It was two rooms on one booking, but they checked themselves in and then said, I've got another room on this booking. Why would you not just go up and say, I've got both. I've got this booking reference and there's two rooms on it. Yeah. Why, why would you not do that? And then it turned out they got some kind of staff discount and there was some hoo-ha. And... Eventually somebody had some comments and said, right, well, while we sort this out, let's get other people, let's get this flow moving. Hmm. And then after that, it just went a bit more smooth. Yeah. Um, one point, actually, just if we're on the hotel review section, they only gave us one towel. Oh, Yeah. What's that about? Oh, it's a room for two people, so you get one towel. What the fuck? But is that a London thing? Because when I stayed in a travel lodge with my friend for Bon Jovi, we only got one towel. Anyone who lives in London, is there a towel ration situation? It's a towel ration. You know, yeah. What's going on? Yeah, that was a bit nuts. And uh, yeah, we kind of freshened up a bit, went straight out to, we were looking for somewhere that kind of did like a burger or something. Yeah, because obviously we were on Brick Lane and the most nearest food places to us were generally curries, and as much as a curry on Brick Lane is lovely, because we've had one before, we didn't really want that at that point in time. No, not at, not at lunchtime, when it's red hot, just kind of want, I just want a, a cider, some burger, that'll but do me. Been, and obviously before a gig as well. If we'd have gone down the Friday night, we probably would have done that, wouldn't we? Oh yeah, if we'd have, if we'd have gone down yeah. Friday night, I would have booked us a table somewhere and we'd yeah. have gone and had a proper meal. But anyway, you found a very good spot, which we will recommend to you if you're in the vicinity of, I want to say, Spitalfield, Shoreditch, that kind of area. Yeah, Spitalfields, we've just checked. Yeah. And it was called? Williams Ale and Cider House. And it was perfect for us. Yeah, which looked really familiar when I went in, but I think a lot of those pubs in that area do. It looked familiar on the pictures, very much like a pub we went to many years ago in a similar direction Yeah, area, but it was different. It was, yeah, yeah. it was a different pub and it, it was really nice. They got some decent, like the food was absolutely spot on, just kind of what we needed. Decent burger. Yeah, I had probably one of the best, best. You had I, a vest? I had a vest. The best veggie burger I've ever had. Mm. So it was just like a 
a non veggie burger. It's very just like the pickles. And the is a non veggie is a non veggie burger not a burger? Just a burger, a meat burger, if you will. <laughs> yeah, just the sauce and the pickles on it and everything. They were just really nice. And the funny thing was as well for me, at least. On the way there, I said to you, I've got a really weird craving for pear cider. Mm. And then we got there and then got Lily's pear and apple, which it was, was a perfect. sign. Yeah. It was a sign. And to be honest, we sat there after we had two, three pints, hadn't we? We'd have happily stayed there all afternoon. You know what? If we'd not got to go to the Foo Fires, I, I could have sat there all afternoon. I was, they got the football on. We got a nice spot. Food was lovely. The cider was really nice. They got a decent selection of ciders and ales, as you'd expect from a cider and ales, I suppose. But a bit daft, if you yeah, really. Yeah, Miss- just old lager, lager and whiskey. Yeah, misleading. But yeah, it was really decent uh, little spot, and I'm glad we again. You kind of went, just went on my judgment. I was, that looks alright. That'll do. Sometimes I just don't want to think. I just want to go <laughs> you just, to you just yeah. want me to tell you. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> but yeah, definitely recommend that place if you're in the area for. a pre-gig food and drink or whatever mm. we'll definitely go back if we're in london again yeah but sadly yeah we ha- we did have a date with dave Grohl, so he spoiled our little afternoon pub session yeah <laughs> yeah back to the hotel again it was only like five ten minute walk got ready and headed for the west ham ground which is the olympic stadium london stadium london stadium that's the one i think is the official term these days yeah so to get there we I think there were various options via bus and underground, etc. The the best option we found, the most straightforward, was we walked to Liverpool Street and then got on the Elizabeth Line, which went straight to Stratford. Mm. Granted, we got on the wrong Elizabeth Line tube first and had to get off at the next stop at yeah. Whitechapel. And then on the next one that did go to Stratford, so just be aware that it splits off before Stratford in a kind of north and south divide. Yeah, and it was it was busy, shall we say, as you'd expect, the transport going towards a thousands and thousands of tickets sold venue yeah i don't even know what the capacity is wembley's 90 i want to say 70 i think it's about 70 yeah, yeah. but yeah it, it, by the time we got to Stratford, we were squished in very much so mm. and then we just kind of went with the flow when we got off because yeah just looked for the bridge exit but the walk from the train well from the tube station to the bridge five yeah we were bridge five or and Five or yeah, eight it was bridge, five, it was bridge or, five. It was quite. It was a bigger walk than I was expecting. I think. I think it must have taken them twenty minutes. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, it took a little while to get out of the station because it, it was kind of packed, wasn't it? Yeah. We were shuffling along to get out. Yeah, and then part way through, there were steward, guardian, standing people, and then all those old people with seats went straight on. Yeah, to the seating areas or the seating entrances, I guess. And the sun had made a very strong appearance at this point after being cloudy when we set Yeah, it got really warm. Yeah, we found the gate fairly easy enough, wasn't it, as well, Stuart? Yeah, but yeah, it's well laid out and directions were decent enough. Security was straightforward, just checking the bag and a waft with a metal detector. It was. One thing about security, though, they kind of did it in the wrong order. So they were giving wristbands to people who were standing and not to anybody who was seating. Oh, yeah. I guess while we're talking about security, that was one thing that I wasn't impressed with. Mm. I think they should have had wristbands for seating and standing. So standing people had yellow wristbands on. And I think people right at the very front got their golden circle wristbands and all that crap. But there was nothing stopping standing people wandering into the seating area. And basically jumping over the the stand into the Mm. standing area. I mean, I think sometimes people were making a genuine mistake and going kind of through the exit down to the seating area thinking they could get to the ground from there yeah and then get into the bottom and going no we can't and some people just stood there watching whoever was on at the time some people were just sensible and went back and then there were three four lads who jumped over the railings yeah which didn't impress a lot of people who were down below them because they were well they sent the drinks flying and everything didn't they so but yeah security weren't stopping them and there were at times there were people with sanding wristbands on just sitting in seats as mm. well. So I think there should have been something to prevent that bit happening. But apart from that, yeah, it was kind yeah, of... Yeah, I feel like they just did it in the wrong order. Mm. Just like give seating the yellow wristband and make standard not have a wristband. Yeah. And then just and that way, they people, they can kind of be spotted as they're coming in. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, there was no kind of security on the, the bit where you go down the to gate. the, the yeah. gate. If, yeah, within the stadium. Mm. The inner gates. 
I guess. Obviously, there were signs saying for standing, go down here, but people just assumed you can get down to the floor from every set of steps, I suppose. Anyway, security getting in was fine in terms yeah. of checking you and all that, so... What do you think of the stadium itself? I think it's good for music. I don't think it would be that good for football, just because we seem very distant from the pitch. I'd, yeah, I said that to you, didn't I? It's because they've got the yeah. race track around the side of it. Yeah, it'd be good for athletics. I just don't feel personally it's a, a football ground. You'd feel a bit too far removed to get yeah. a connection, don't you? Or it'd be all right for football, like Wembley is, and just used for occasion and internationals. Mm. But to have that as your regular football ground, I'd, yeah. I can't imagine you getting much of an atmosphere. That's the word I was looking for, yeah. Yeah. There's no Russ Abbott going on. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we're showing our age. Yeah. We have seats at stadiums and we talk about Russ Abbott. <laughs> yeah. I like sitting in the stands there because I think, from where we were sat anyway, the seats, the view was really, really good. And I imagine when you're watching football, you've got quite a decent view. But atmosphere-wise, I imagine it's like it. We only have one row in front of us, so that always helps. Yeah, definitely. And we've got end seats somehow. Yeah, I mean, we normally try and pick end seats, but we fluked these, or I fluked them you somehow. Fluked, yeah, because you got tickets. In my panic to get the tickets when they went on sale, probably about a year ago. Yeah, I just kind of fluked end seats, because I don't think there was the option to pick on them out when I was No, you, you showed me in the I wasn't. just kind of went for the ones that looked the best within the budget I was willing to spend. Mm. It turned out all right. Well, I was just going to say, obviously, the first thing we did when we got within the stadium, actually, I think the first thing we did was go to the toilets. The second thing we did was obviously investigate the bar. Yeah, that got busier, obviously, through the day and night. But I don't think the prices were that bad for London. I don't think for a stadium and or London, they were bad. Because I thought I'd read reports of like eight, nine pound a pint, which I think Bira Moretti was around that as the most expensive. I think that mm. was eight fifty or nine a pint. Which is way too fucking much. Yeah. And I was drinking inches. I, it's not very often you see inches cider at a, anywhere. No, they had it at Nottingham Arena though, didn't they? Mm. But it... I can't think of many other places that I've been to that has it. Because normally it's Magnus or Bulmers or... Strongbow. Strongbow, yeah. Thatchers. Thatchers. Something. All the shit I don't like, yeah. Yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah, we were both on the inches, weren't we? Yeah. I think it's, what was it, 7.45 a pint? Something, yeah, it was 7.45 a pint, yeah. Which is obviously a lot for a pint, but as we often say, if it's something you actually like drinking, it's not quite so bad. It takes the edge off it. Because, like I say, yeah. it's London, it's a stadium. It's going to be expensive. But if it's something you you like, it makes mm. it a little bit more tolerable. And I did notice the drinks choices were quite limited, but that's probably a good thing because it says faffing that people stand in deciding what they want. Oh, I hate that. Which we hate. So they've got like, yeah, inches on. They've got Birra Moretti. They've got a cheaper lager. I can't remember what it was. They had dark fruits in cans. They had little bottles of wine, interestingly, and probably for the greater good, they didn't have big bottles of wine. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And the, the bar staff seemed pretty on it, generally. Yeah, they were pretty switched on. Which always helps. I think one issue... Is trying to find merch. We did have that problem, didn't we? It wasn't very well signposted. They did have a merch stand that opened the day before for people to go down and pick the merch in advance, which is a good idea apart from the fact that people were just buying it to sell on eBay at mm. inflated prices. So I think that they need to make sure that people are showing their ticket if they're going to buy merch, but that's a whole other issue. But yeah, we didn't spot any noticeable merch when we first went in, so we just got a drink and watched Hot Milk before we investigated merch. And I actually asked somebody, didn't I? Mm. In fact, we did our first Instagram Live. We probably should have mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, briefly, we had kind of five, ten minutes on there. Once we finally got on the internet. I didn't have an issue. You we had the issue. On the Wi-Fi, didn't yeah. we? I mean, yeah, there was no, no proper phone signal. Well, yeah, I mean, that many people in that, in, a, in an encased stadium, it's probably going to happen. But yeah, we had five, ten minutes sitting down, so we thought, why don't we do an Instagram Live? With the sun blinding us, yeah. melting our faces off. Yeah, where we were sat, the sun was blazing right at us. And yeah, so we, we were on there for ten minutes, kind of before Hot Milk started. We did that, and Hot Milk came out. And I'll be honest, I've listened to Hot Milk, never really a fan of the stuff that I've listened to. It just doesn't do it for me. Watch them live, a million times better. Yeah, you didn't see them at Download last year, did you? No. Because I've listened yeah. to the stuff and it just didn't do it for me. Yeah, they're definitely one of those bands that sounds better live. They sound heavier. Because I like a lot of their stuff, but there are a few tracks that are more on the poppy side that I'm not as keen on. Yeah, I mean, like from the stuff I listen to, you can kind of see why yeah. I would go, nah, not for me. 
But yeah, they've got loads of really catchy tracks that I do love. Mm. And yeah, so it was the first time I've seen Hot Milk. And I've got to say, I was really impressed. It was much, much better than I thought it would be. That's good to hear. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed. I, yeah, I did. But it's nice when I see something that I'm not expecting to enjoy. Yeah. I, I was just kind of thinking, oh, well, when Hot Milk's on, I'll just keep going to the bar and back and maybe investigate the merch, see if I can find it. And they came out and started playing. Actually, I was like, this is really good. Uh, yeah. Enjoyed that. Yeah. They did open with my favourite Hot Milk track, Horror Shows. So I was like, oh, I've played that already. <laughs> I'm going now. <laughs> I was happy with that one. Bloodstream, I love. Alice Cooper's Pool House, which I think is a great track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they played about eight tracks, I think, in total. Yeah, I reckon they had about 30 minutes. Oh, half an hour, yeah. It was a good mix from the debut album and a few other tracks chucked in there as well. And they seem to have quite a few people who are really into them that were standing. Yeah, including myself. They did try and get a mosh bit going. I didn't think that, from what I could see from where we were sat anyway, I don't think that necessarily happened. No. Or the, not to the extent you'd expect normally. Well, no, the thing is, when you're supporting Foo Fighters and you're playing just before Courtney Barnett, I imagine it's not the place where most people are going to be into a pit. I think, yeah, it's not the most kind of pity type environment. And also people who've probably been queuing a very long time to get a decent spot are not then going to lose it or risk losing it by bouncing about in a mosh pit. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Hannah did her best trying to get the crowd hyped up, so did a good job of it as always. And I think we kind of dropped lucky with the supports as well because there were different supports for different dates. And this was kind of our preferred date. And stocks, it was a Saturday. Mm. And I think there was the same support for Birmingham, which is obviously nearer to us, but that was last Thursday. So that would have meant at least a day's leave or half a day's yeah. leave to kind of get there in time and then get back or stay over or whatever. So we wanted to kind of do the Saturday, even though it was a bit of a, a hectic week after download. Yeah, it was pretty nonstop. And what else I quite liked is that with the support stuff, like, you really like hot milk. I'm not so fussed, but I really like Courtney Barnett. And you were, I don't know, were you just kind of, like, mixed? Pretty mixed, yeah. I'd listened to a few tracks. There's one in particular I really like, which is probably the most famous one. But, yeah, again, like, you were with hot milk, happy to watch. One thing I did notice, actually, I've only just thought about it. I didn't notice any merch for the support bands. No, I didn't see any. Whether there was just maybe some on particular stands or they just didn't have any, I don't know. I'd imagine they'd have some, but it's... It's one of those things, when you're in a new place and things aren't signposted as well as they could be, mm. you're never going to find stuff. You you have to drop lucky. Yeah. I mean, it's hard enough to try and find the Foo Fighters stuff. That's true, which we actually did after watching Hot Milk. Yeah, but only because you got directions from someone who we saw with Foo merch. Yeah. Well, we saw quite a few people who'd found the merch, but yeah, we just ended up asking someone because stadiums are big places. It's hard to find things. Yeah, I don't want to traipse around for... 40 minutes just trying to find a stand. Yeah, apparently they were quite regular, kind of around the concourse. We must have been right in the middle of two. We must have been the way we came in, and there was supposed to be one right outside, but maybe we were just, I think we just made a beeline for the toilets, actually, as soon as we got in, didn't we? Anyway, we found the merch queue, we stood in it, we got merch. Mm. You're actually wearing your food t-shirt today. Yeah, I got a black and white one. It's very nice. And scorpion print. print. Scorpion print, yes. And we got one that's not black. I know. This was the only black one, I think. Yeah. It was a quite good selection, actually, and I don't think it was badly priced T-shirt wise. I think were they thirty five? Mine was thirty five. Yours was forty five. Forty five. Yeah, it's it's kind of a thicker material, isn't it? And it's got like the edge of the sleeve. It's almost like a hockey shirt. Yeah. Not. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's like a jersey. I think we're hoodie seventy. I feel like there were more than that. I, feel like I seven, think they were 80 they? or 19, yeah. I remember looking at the hoodies going, that is way too much. Yeah. Because they were pullover hoodies as well. Yeah, they were, weren't they? Not zips. Yeah. Or at least where we were, they were. And there was a few other bits. There was a tote bag. I think there were a couple of hats. Yeah. They were doing a limited poster for each night of the tour with a different design on, which had sold out because there was a woman in front of us who really wanted the poster and she actually went to check that they'd still got some and came back to the queue. And then by the time she got to the front of the queue, they just somebody bought the just, last one. Somebody had just bought the last one, yeah. Because you wanted one as well. Yeah, well, I kind of did. And then I was worried about either losing it or it getting damaged. Mm. But, yeah. 
Um, and they seem to be fairly well stocked with most stuff, but I think I might have got the last one of this size because they seem, the woman said, oh, no, we've not got that. And then she went and found one. So Yeah, just pulled it out of nowhere. Which, yeah, it would have been annoying if we'd have ended up traipsing around other merch stands because this was the only one that I really liked. Yeah. But anyway, and we took our trusty download RIP bag with us to put the merch in because we were prepared for once. Yes. I had to think about that. I took it, didn't I? I had it in my pocket. Yeah. Well, I said, shall we take that if we do buy merch? Because knowing that it was going to be quite warm, we might not have wanted to wear it straight away. So once we sorted all that out, it was off to see Courtney Bonnet, who I thought was incredible. Yeah, I really enjoyed her too. Yeah, sounded really good live. Yeah, it was kind of just, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but it's kind of just nice background music to have while you're waiting, you know what I mean? Like I it suppose wasn't, if you're not into it. Yeah, like Hot Milk, it was kind of bopped along and zinged along, whereas I wasn't that familiar with Courtney, so it was more just kind of sitting and listening, but in a good way. And yeah. I think with the sun being out as well, it was just like... Perfect summer perfect afternoon for kind you. Of, yeah. yeah, I, I mean, I love her stuff, and... She did play the one that you know. Pedestrian at best. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one that I really know. So I think I might have some along to that one. Yeah, I thought she might have finished with that, actually. Yeah, I did, It was actually. about halfway through the set. But, yeah, she had like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, I think. Yeah, I think it was around that. Yeah, a little bit longer than Hot Mill. And, yeah, she, again, she did eight tracks. And, but yeah, she, again, got quite a decent crowd as well. Yeah, I mean, the stadium was filling up filling more up, and more. Yeah. It was kind of... Obviously, there'd be the initial rush for standing people, particularly to get to the front, and then it was just kind of people trickling in from then on in, because up to that point, I don't think there'd been anyone directly in front of us. No, it was only when she'd been on, was she about halfway through a set? Yeah. Uh, the people in front of us turned up. But yeah, I really enjoyed watching her, and I would like to see her, like her own show, do her own shows and try and get to some of those. Yeah, I, I'd be up for that. Yeah. Yeah, she played a lot of stuff that I thought she might, like Avant Gardener, History Eraser. I think that got quite a good reception. Obviously, Pedestrian at best, everybody kind of who's listened to Courtney Barnett before knew that one. Yeah. So that was a popular one, but again, which is why I thought she might say it till the end. And yeah, I was really liked her. I thought she was amazing. Very good live. And yeah, I want to see her again. Yeah, I think it was a good selection of support. Like I said, obviously, the different supports for different dates, but. I, I think, think it was a nice work mate. well. Yeah. yeah. I think when they picked the support, they did a really good job on that. Because I wasn't sure how it kind of worked sound wise from hot milk to her to foo. It's, I didn't know if it had blend well, but it actually did. Yeah. I think it all just worked, yeah. worked well to build up the atmosphere. Yeah. There it is again, Russ Abbott. Russ Abbott making another appearance. Yeah. So it was a few more drinks after that, wasn't it? Because there was quite a gap to the Foo Fighters. You say that, I think you went to the bar. I think you went to the toilet and then you said you'd call at the bar on the way and you were gone quite a while. Because mm. the queue was really bad by that point. Obviously everyone would be stocking up before the foos came on. And then I just got a message from you saying, come to the bar, now. And I was like, okay. So I kind of, fortunately I got the message straight away. I stood up straight away, got the merch bag. I had trouble getting up the steps because there were people just standing on the stairs. A million. Yeah, which included people who should have been on the ground floor standing and people just milling and get to the top of the steps and there's you with four pints in a tray and the biggest bucket of popcorn <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Someone had an idea. I did. I had a few ciders and thought, I really want some popcorn. And in my defence, it was, and this is kind of a bad thing for uh, the stadium, they only do one size and it's fucking huge. Yeah, I don't get why they would do that. Surely they'd do at least half that. No one knew you'd have bought the biggest one anyway. So. <laughs> well, the thing is, I probably wouldn't have done. Because uh, I thought if I've got to mm. carry like a tray of four, I would have gone, I'll use a bit of common sense and not get the biggest thing I can see. And I wasn't expecting it to be that big. And when they put it on the, when they filled it up and put it on the counter, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> what kind of fuck am I going to move with these? To be fair, when you said that first, I wondered what the problem was because I wasn't aware and I was almost expecting you to be stood there with, I don't know, an impossible amount of pints. I wasn't expecting a giant bu bucket of popcorn. Yeah. And it gave me a bit of a flashback to you demanding, what's the stuff? Candy floss. Yeah. I love candy floss. escape plan. I was like, oh God, he's, he's had one of those like fairground type moments or something. Yeah. Anyway, we got the popcorn and the four pints safely down the steps. 
Yeah, got them to our seats, and I think we were, there was a bit of a wait, wasn't there, for the food? So it was just a bit of wasn't too much af- long after that that they came out. I don't think it was actually. It was maybe ten minutes. They kind of used the time, didn't it? Yeah, you in, in a, you in a way. You with yeah. thumbs. It kind of that used the time, and then we just munched some popcorn, sipped a few pints. I had to keep standing up for people to come down the row, which is the downside of your end seat. Yeah. That was fine. And they came on at half seven. Mm. Yeah, started off with All My Life. Yeah. And it was as soon as they started, everybody just went mental, didn't Everyone they? just stood up. I did say to you, because obviously you have a thing, if you've got seats, you should be sat in your seats is your kind of mind. In my view, yeah. And I did say to you, generally at stadium gig- gigs, particularly in the lower part of the seats, you tend to find people will just stand up and it has a knock-on effect and it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, if you're higher up, people tend to do it less because you've got a, not a better view, but a, I don't know, a more wider view. I don't know. I've sat low down and I've sat high up in stadiums and it tends to be less of a thing if you're higher up. Mm. But up we stood, popcorn and all. And I think I spent most of the first song just going to you, is that Joel Dave Grohl? Yes, you <laughs> did. <laughs> Yes, you did. Because <laughs> I felt a little bit like, you know, when I went to see Ghost and it was like the first, po- it wasn't the first post-lockdown gig that we did, but it was after that limbo period where things had happened and then things were getting cancelled again. And I was still convinced that in the arena that it was going to get cancelled. And I think after the trauma, obviously, when the last tour got cancelled, I was convinced this wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so even sat in the stadium, I was still convinced that something was going to go wrong. <laughs> But it was fine. It was fine. It was, it was actual day grow. Yeah. And anyway, from that, they went straight into No Son of Mine. Uh-huh. With some snippets from Black Sabbath in there. And I think Metallica, Metallica. made yeah. a feature as well. I did have a look at the set list in advance, kind of, from some of the previous day, just to get an idea of the mix and how much of the new stuff they'd be doing. But I couldn't fully remember it because obviously it's a very long set list. Because you know, for three hours it's going to be. Yeah, I think it was a nicely blended mix, to be honest. Yeah, I can safely say that they played everything that I wanted them to play. And I could probably look back on the discography and go, oh, actually, I wouldn't have minded hearing that. But in terms of my top few songs, they were all played, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty much with you on that. Yeah, they, I mean, they played things like The Pretender, which I really like, Times Like These. Yeah, and that had kind of the band introductions, which most people well, they, said. They played the Breakout end. before that as well. Oh, they did, yeah. And uh, oh, Breakout's one of my favourites from Colour and the Shape, isn't it? Second album. Yeah. And yeah, then when they did the band intros, they were some interesting choices because they did Sabotage. Yeah. was one of them. Uh, Blitzkrieg Bob. Yeah. And another one that totally random that I'd, I've never heard of anywhere else other than the Nine Inch Nails gig is March of the Pigs. Yeah, they kind of did. They've kind of mentioned other bands, particularly that Josh Freese had played with. Yeah. So I think that's where that kind of stemmed from, didn't it? Mm. But yeah, I think throughout the night, as well as playing the songs, there was obviously lots of interaction, little twiddly bits and interludes. Yeah. But not in the way that some bands kind of are wasting time filling. It was just... It, well, it wasn't filler, was it? No, it was. Not at all. It all worked. It just felt like they were having a good time. Yeah, and considering how long Dave Grohl's been doing that for now. He, he He's not bored of it, is he? No. He, yeah, he's not. He looks like he genuinely loves every minute of doing it. And this was probably about the f- fifth or sixth UK date so far. Yeah, it must have I been. I think, because they'd done London on the Thursday. They'd done a couple in Manchester, I think. Have they done Glasgow? Possibly, yeah. I, think I feel like something. they would have done Glasgow. Yeah, I think they did Cardiff, that. maybe. Cardiff was after. Oh, was Cardiff, and Birmingham okay. was after. Yeah, I know the Birmingham date was after. I wasn't yeah, sure about Cardiff. Yeah, Cardiff, I think, was either the Monday or Tuesday after. So, the, you know, there were a good few dates into the UK run of this. So, yeah. It's not looking jaded or tired. Or yeah. I'm just going back to the earlier part of the set as well, because they did play, I think, about four or five tracks off the new album. They went into Rescued, which is my favourite one on the new album. Yeah. But the, the stuff on the new album, sound, again, sounds better live than it does. Yeah, some of it does, because it's more on the lighter side I yeah think. so when it's live it's a lot heavier yeah and it does sound better mm. yeah and then after they'd done the intros they announced a very special guest didn't they which i wasn't expecting no i don't know if this happened on every night i've not spotted it i've seen quite a lot of clips shared from this and obviously we're talking a bit more detail about violet coming on as in violet roll mm. his daughter which i did expect because that seems to be kind of a staple feature yeah but 
yeah, we had Shane Hawkins. Yeah, which I didn't see coming at all. No. There was kind of like no expectation of that. He's a really good fucking drummer. Oh, yeah. He's definitely got the drum genetics there. Yeah, he, he drum just the way he drums as well, obviously very much like his dad. Mm. Yeah, and he so he played drums on My Hero? Yeah, I wasn't expecting My Hero so soon in the set. I was not prepared. For, Emotionally. For, for, no, I was not prepared for the song, and I wasn't prepared for Shane coming out to play the song, so that was a moment. That was really, really good. And he, Yeah, I think even Dave kind of stopped and just watched him towards the end just drumming and seemed in awe of him, to be honest. Yeah. And I know that he did do that on the at the Taylor tribute show a couple of years ago, didn't they? When they did that, yeah, went, that was Wembley on it. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was just yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, an absolute moment. And then yeah, into some more kind of classics: "The Skies of Neighborhood," "Learn to Fly." Yeah, which I'm, I'm glad they played. I really wanted to hear that. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. And Orlandria as well. I feel like that's an underrated favorite for me. Mm. One there, I tend to forget about, but I really love it. I know what you mean. Yeah. It is kind of like a forgotten track. And then I think there was an, a kind of an acoustic section of the middle, wasn't there? Yeah, it just kind of slowed it down a little bit, didn't it? After all the kind of speed of the other stuff before it. Yeah, it kind of been a bit full on. And yeah, I think a few people then joined the acoustic, kind of sat down for a little bit and mm. had a bit of a rest. And it was kind of a mix as well. Some of it was just Dave on his own. Some of it was Dave with other people. A nice little interlude, I guess. Yeah, so they got through all of the um, kind of slower acoustic pieces. It was about four, wasn't there? Yeah, I think it was. And then into Monkey Ranch. Yeah, it kind of came back with a bang. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. And again, so it was weird because they like they started off fast, had this really slow section, this kicked off fast, and then they brought Violet out. Yeah, after Monkey Ranch. After Monkey Ranch, yeah. And... I've heard Violet sing before, and she's got an incredible voice. Yeah. Really, really good voice. And, yeah, so they they did Shame Shame together. And then my favourite one with her, Show Me How. Yeah, that is my favourite one. I absolutely yeah. love that song. That is incredible. So, yeah, they got through those two, then played Aurora. Which, again, is one of my kind of forgotten favourites. Yeah. Off Learn to Fly, isn't it, that one? Mm. Yeah, they dedicated that one to Taylor. Apparently it was his favourite Foo Fighters song. Yeah. I never knew, so again, that was another moment. Yeah, and then they finished with Best of You. Finished in inverted commas. Inverted commas, yeah, has finished. Yeah, yeah, which was a good way to end kind of like the, you know, the official <laughs> set, as it were. And what I did find interesting at that point that, obviously we knew they'd be back on again. Yeah. But a lot of people did choose that time to leave. It's like, well... Why the fuck would you? Yeah. Unless, I mean, unless you've seen the Foo Fighters, you know... A ridiculous amount of time, so why would you ever? But then if you're that big a fan that you've seen them X amount of times, you'd want to see you'd all want of to them, surely. Yeah. And I get that people want to miss the traffic, they want to miss the rush and everything, but I think the amount that you pay, you want to get your full money's worth. Mm. And, you know, to go and see the Foo Fighters and not see the last track, what, what are you thinking? And, it, it, yeah, it was just a bit weird. Like, the people next to us went, didn't they? And it was like, Yeah. And I think a couple of people in front of us went, but then they came back again. I think they'd just gone for refreshments or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, there was quite... Quite a noticeable it started out, yeah. kind of, yeah, exodus was the word I was looking for. A bit like, you know, when you see people leaving the football at I was just the gonna say to you, minute. It was very, obviously, in a football stadium, it would be similar to that. Yeah, I was going to say to you, I think I've only ever left one game early from football mm. because it was 8-1, so we weren't winning. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I ever have. That's the only, the one time that that's happened to me. Yeah. Where I've gone, mm. I'm trying to think, and I don't recall ever doing it. It's been very rare, maybe once. I've left a gig early, maybe twice. Not including well, festival yeah. kind of things. But we've been, I mean, we've been to hundreds and hundreds of games between us. Games and gigs. Games and gigs, yeah. And, yeah, so I, I don't understand that, but they did the encore, and it was only two songs. I thought it might have been more. I did, and it's interesting they played The Teacher, because that's about ten minutes long, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like they could have done three, two, maybe two tracks in place of that. I thought it was an interesting one to have on the set list overall because of its length. I mean, it's a great track. I do like it on the album, but yeah. And then to have it as part of the encore as well, I thought that was an interesting choice. A strange choice, wasn't it? Yeah. And then they played the final song, which is 
probably our combined favourite, I think. I think so. Yeah. Which was Avalon, again, from the corner in the show. And that's the song that made me love Foo Fighters <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. It, it's still one of the best songs I've ever written. I, I absolutely love its bits. And yeah, and then it was a huge fireworks show after. Yeah, which I, I was kind of expecting, but I'd forgotten about, if you know what I mean. Like, a, yeah, I think I was so lost in the moment of the song, I forgot that that would happen. Yeah, yeah, and that went on for quite a while. It was quite a, yeah, quite a show in yeah. itself. So that, yeah, that went on for a good couple of minutes, just all the explosions, fireworks going off. And then, yeah, then it was time to leave. That was an effort. It was. To be fair, I, did you go to the toilet as well or did I go? Just me. I think just you. I think I just nipped in. Basically, just not knowing how long it was going to take us to get back, I thought, you know, best go now while I can. Actually, can we just talk about the toilets? Because we've done a kind of a stadium review, but I don't know what your experience was of the male toilets. But I felt that there were plenty of toilets. They were really well spaced around each block, weren't they? So there were a lot of them. Mm. But the first one I went in, as soon as I got there, there was hardly any toilet roll in any of them. I'd got tissues in my bag, so I was fine, but someone actually complained to one of the staff that there was no toilet rolls, and that was like as soon as we got there. I remember you saying that, And yeah. then from then on in, there was hardly any water coming out of the sinks. And I think possibly when I went before Foo Fighters, the queue to wash your hands was longer than the queue for the toilets because there was about, I don't know, seven or eight sinks, but there was only one where water was actually coming out. Oh, uh, so water supply issue somewhere. So, yeah, you could go into the toilet fine, but then you had to queue to actually be able to use water to wash your hands. So, yeah, that was one of the not-so-good aspects of the stadium for me. Mm. But anywho, yeah. Actually, finding the men's was harder than I thought it would be because they seemed to put them the opposite side. As in yours, but it was quite visible where yours were, but mine weren't. Okay. And the signage just wasn't very good, especially mm. if it's somewhere you don't know. Yeah, I guess that's an issue if you're not familiar yeah. with the stadium and often you find with stadiums there are more men's toilets than women's which is understandable but i felt it was quite an even spread i think it was 50 50 yeah then again, because they probably designed it as a stadium not as a football ground well it was designed for the olympics wasn't it yeah. thinking about it so yeah that makes sense yes anyway once we did that we kind of followed the herd back towards the tube station yeah we didn't follow the herd to greece no <laughs> on a holiday no <laughs> we didn't as we got near the station traffic the human traffic as it were we kind of came to a standstill didn't we but there were kind of police and it was stop go signs yeah which yeah we were all very british and obeyed but you always get some dickheads trying to push the way through but, yeah which happened you know is what it is and then when we got nearer the entrance people seemed to be going up an escalator round by where the um it's the westfield shopping center isn't it mm. and we didn't remember using well, we, an escalator we didn't, we didn't. And we were just a bit confused and we were a bit concerned because it was really queuing up the escalator and all that direction that that wasn't the right place for us to go. No, so the crowd kind of split off, I'd probably say 80% going up that way and we went the other way. And I think there are quite a few different tube lines going from there and my logic at the time was I don't want to queue and queue for the tube to then find out we've queued for the wrong tube or the wrong line or whatever. Yeah. And then be stalked. And also just the thought of getting on a busy tube as well was not appealing at that point because we were pretty squashed up with people anyway, but at least we had fresh air. Yeah, you just you just get crushed and crushed. And although the tubes are frequent, you've got like probably 60, 70,000 people all trying to use the same lines. And it's just going to be a nightmare. And I suspect the vast majority of people would be going back west into central London. Yeah. Yeah, I don't and, imagine many staying in East London. No, uh, obviously the immediate hotels people would be going to, but that would be a minority, really. Mm. And, they, yeah, they will cram as many people on the tubes as they can. Yeah. So we decided to go straight on and found the bus station. Mm. Which took a bit of a effort because you you get to the bus stop and then the driver would just drive off a gram and do like a, a turn. Yeah. And then be on the other side of the road, so then you have to go to the other side of the road to get on the fucking bus. Yeah, it was a bit confusing, but we identified the one that went nearest to where we were, at least. And the driver eventually let us on, and I don't think they were quite ready for going, but at least we had to sit down then, didn't we? And yeah. it probably took about 40 minutes to get back to the stop we needed. Yeah. But it, I think... it probably took us maybe an hour overall. Mm. But I think if we'd have got the tube, because of the amount of people, 
and trying to get to the right stuff and we'd have just been crushed for probably an hour and a half. Exactly. It would have been a less comfortable journey, really. So, yeah, I think that's a much better journey. Potentially a tip as well if you go to the stadium, maybe look at going to Stratford bus station if there's something going the way you need to go rather than trying to get yourself on the tube. Yeah, it, it definitely made our life a lot easier. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was it. Back to the hotel, raiding the vending machine, as I always do. Well, we were peckish. There was a kebab shop. I could have got some cheesy chips, but I decided against it. And um, You're still traumatised by those last ones, aren't you? A little bit. Plus, yeah, it looked quite busy around the one at the end of Brick Lane. And, yeah, and I thought, well, it's a small room as well. I don't want it to just smell of grease in the morning. Yeah. My cheesy chips. I didn't, we knew there was a vending machine, so... You, you can't go wrong with a vending machine picnic, can you? No, and I'd, I'd been saying to you for a little while, I re- all I've been craving is some peanut M&M's. Yeah, <laughs> forgot about that. And yeah, it's all peanut M&M's, it's like, right, I'm having those. I was a bit disappointed because I was just hankering. I think it was just because I wanted something cheesy and I really wanted cheesy Doritos. Mm. And I think the only option they got was cheese kettle chip. Yeah. But they were all right. Yeah, you went and got... I got you those, and that. But then I also saw the boost. I love a boost. Yeah. So I'd have that. I got about the boost. Yeah. So mine was quite a sweet, sweet finish to the evening. Yeah. And then I'd savoury, then I dabbled in the M&Ms as well. Mm. And yeah, that was it. Or the next morning to get the train back. Mm. Yeah. So having experienced your first stadium gig, how did you find it overall? I thought the sound was amazing, which obviously always has variable depending on where you're sitting mm, definitely. but where we were sat the sound was incredible thought it was really good i think everybody who performed that night was amazing really enjoyed that the volume of people i'm not a fan of but obviously it's you know it is what it is nothing you can do about that getting in out of the stadium a mm, little bit further we were probably closer options we could have done but we did we just don't know I don't think there was, to be honest, because we'd struggled finding a hotel that was not... No, as in, as in the journey. Oh, the journey, sorry, the tube journey. The tube the hotel. journey, yeah. No, the, from where we got off the tube to to the arena, well, to the stadium. Would I do it again? It would have to depend on the band. Mm. It really, there are only, I'll be honest, I think there are only a handful of bands that I would do that for. To be honest, it's the same for me, really. It's got to be, especially the price of stadiums as well. You've got, it's got to be something That's you really want to do. yeah. And obviously the additional costs, because you usually, you don't have to stay over, but generally if you're travelling, you, you need to. And mm. your travel costs. Yeah, so like with the Guns N' Roses, when they did their stadium tour, I thought I w- that's one I wouldn't do, even though Guns N' Roses were the band you know, that I absolutely love got me into metal. I wouldn't do it for them because of how unreliable Axl Rose is. Yeah, that's true. So that's why I wouldn't do Guns N' Roses. Mm. Metallica, I've seen, I'm trying to think of other bands that could do it. Metallica, I've seen God knows how many times. So it's just not, the appeal's not there. I think I would do it for Metallica because I've never actually been to their own show. I've only ever seen them at festivals. Hmm. So when they kind of do their next tour circuit, I might consider that depending where it is and the dates and all of that. And they usually have good support as well. Yeah. Ramstein, I wouldn't because I don't like enough of the stuff mm-hmm. and it doesn't. Well, it doesn't weigh up the cost. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? For the cost of a ticket for a band that I, I think are okay, but I'm not a huge fan of. But you, I think you would prefer the live experience, and I think the best way to experience Ramstein would it be a stadium. in a stadium. Yeah. So I think that could, would work. Could, would, should be one we do. Yeah. Pearl Jam, potentially, but they just pulled out of their They did actually. Most recent yeah, show. The one that should be tonight. Should be tonight, yeah. I don't know if I would want to see Pearl Jam in a stadium. I feel like, obviously they're great and I love them, but I don't know if they're, I saw them in an arena, but Cardiff Arena is quite small. They've not really got a big kind of stage show. Then again, now they're a Foo Fighters, they're just on there doing their thing, aren't Mm. they, I guess. I don't know. ACDC, I probably would. Yeah, and we very nearly did. Yeah, and Green Day. Yeah, I think that's just the only way to see Green Day. It's the only way you can get to see Green Day unless you go to Leeds Festival. Or the Isle of Wight. Oh, hell right, yeah. So I don't know if there's anybody else. Mm. Like Chili Peppers are shit live, so I wouldn't watch them. I wouldn't pay for a stadium to see them. No, they're past their best now. And Mm. after seeing them at Leeds last time, definitely not. Yeah, we saw them at Leeds like eight years ago and they were terrible. Probably one of the worst headline bands I've ever Mm. seen. And yeah, other than the ones we've mentioned, I can't think of who would be good at a stadium. Like Ghost would be good at a stadium. 
but it would depend on the time of year because they work better in the dark. I know what you mean. Yeah, that's the thing. The whole stage with. show and by the time the stadium tend to be in summer, obviously, for weather purposes and probably light purposes actually. But obviously, by the time they finish, they tend to be in the dark. The shows, obviously, yeah. obviously with daylight, and you see the the sun deteriorate. So, yeah, I know what you mean by that. But then again, probably the same for Ramstein. Yeah, again, that's true because they're quite a visual band. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the only issue I'd have with mm. with Ghost is that maybe it wouldn't work as well as I want it to well, compared yeah, to an arena. Yeah. Compared to an arena mean. where it's all yeah. where it's where they can control the lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Although they did do outdoor shows last year, was it last year on the US tour? They did like the outdoor kind of amphitheatre shows and stuff. But their shows generally time, start but, later. Yeah, and obviously different lighting in America. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Different sunsets and times. Well, like their chat shows don't start till eleven mm. and eleven at night. So wow, okay. <laughs> They're kind of used to that more later finish and start for things. Mm. I think overall, in terms of a stadium review, obviously I've got other stadiums to compare it to. The sound was definitely a lot better than some that have been in. To be mm-hmm. honest, most of my previous stadiums I've been what I've been done and done? Seaton. I've done Etihad and I've done Sandin and Seaton there, which was all right. Mm-hmm. I guess you say that as a <laughs> I'm snarling. As a United fan goes, yeah. it is hovel. Um, <laughs> it's very concrete, is the he had. They're and all it's, concrete. No, it just seems more concrete than most. Old Trafford's very bricky. It is, yeah. And that's quite nice. Etihad, concrete, very grey. I've done Villa Park many times. Say many times, two or three. And again, that's that's fine. I've only ever done seat in there. I think the sound was quite good there, from what I remember. Mm. And, it's an old... It's a bit of an old tired stadium though, isn't it? Villa it Park. is. It's a bit grubby around the outside. And I think last time I went, they'd run out of food. So I just had crisps for me too. But anyway, where else have I been? Stadium wise, Millennium Stadium. Mm-hmm. Many, many moons ago. From what I remember, that was very good. That would have been relatively new though, wouldn't it? When you went it there. It hadn't been open very long, no. And I think the roof was closed. I don't know if they always close the roof for stadiums or not. I don't know. Because obviously that's going to affect your sound, isn't yeah. it? And your acoustics. Stoke City. Random one. Oh, okay. And that was a weird one. Um, That's because... a relatively new ground as well, isn't it? I guess didn't so. They, didn't they have a new stadium built? They did, yeah. I went in around 2000 or 2001 mm. on the, oh, which Bon Jovi tour was that? I can see my t-shirt from it and I can't remember which album it was. Is it the oh, I Can't Believe We're Getting Away With This Shit tour? That's the one. <laughs> I can't believe how much these Muppets have paid tour. Um <laughs> But that was big, because well, at least the second shun at the back, that was unreserved to seat in, so you could sit down for some of it and then have your standing ticket and go and stand. Mm. So, yeah, that was, I think it was all right. I don't remember a lot about that, because it was a long time ago. And then Wembley, last time I went, I've only been to one gig at Wembley, the sound was awful, but we were quite high up. So whether that has an impact, because where we were sat, we were very much in line with the kind of... Was that New Wembley? New Wembley, New yeah. Wembley, yeah. Like they had speaker stacks halfway down, didn't they, on the, the ground at... London Stadium. Yeah. So we were quite We were at the right level, yeah. So if it sounds as good when you're way high up further back. Just, Which is the issue we've had at arenas. That's what I mean, yeah. So you can kind of see why the, the cheap seats are higher up because maybe your sound isn't as good as well as your Yeah. Um what do you call it? EVA. So but the stadiums go, yeah. I think it was quite a good one for, for music. Yeah, I mean I would like I say I'd do one again and I'd potentially go back to that one. Maybe get a little bit closer, location-wise, if it's possible. Like we didn't have much choice in location. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was the only thing was the the tra- the travel. It wasn't horrific, but getting from the hotel and back again was took longer it, than we'd have liked. Yeah. yeah, one of those things. We could have walked it in about an hour, I think, but we chose not to. No, knowing us would have ended up in Essex. Probably, yeah. So yeah, I finally ticked off the Foo Fighters. It's done. It's done after twenty-eight years. I think it took. Yeah, 28 years. I'm trying to think when the first first album was self-titled, wasn't it? That was in 95. But 94, I wasn't it? No. It was no, it would have been 95, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't like that, and I didn't like Dave Grohl for doing that at the time. Of course not. But, you know, I forgave him when I heard Everlong. I'm like, actually, you're all right. Yeah, I'll forgive you. You're no, not kind of, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he appreciates that. He would. He's a very lovely man, isn't he? So, and he would appreciate that, I'm sure. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. That wraps up our review of the Foo Fighters at London Stadium last Saturday, the 22nd of June. Let us know if you were there. We saw a few people on Instagram who were there too. So, yeah, let us know if you were there, what you thought. I mean, you can't think 
anything but awesome, really. I don't think if you were there, but you know, there will be a vlog at some point as well. Not got round to even uploading the footage from it yet because we're only just finishing the download one, but there we are. That'll be out at some point. I think I've already put a little bit of photos and stuff out, but um, there will be more on our socials, which you can find at Ready to Mosh Cast on Instagram, Twitter, or X and Threads, and Ready to Mosh on TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. So please give us a like, follow, share on there. We have now got our Patreon, which is £3 a month. And for that, you get to listen to episodes 24 hours in advance wherever possible. Get to find out what's upcoming the following month before anybody else does. And of course, you get to hear all the bloopers that don't make it into the show. So if you'd like to join that, then there is a link on our socials to do that. And if you'd like to support us for free, please just leave us a five star rating, some lovely feedback, share us about, tell people to listen to us. That would be very lovely indeed. Thank you, as always, for listening, and we'll be back soon with another episode. Make it ever long, Luke.